Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Kurt, for your kind introduction. Let's have a brief look at the screws, the technical screws we may have to uh, improve the ecological efficiency and environmental efficiency of the aircraft in the future. Maybe it should work. Okay. Here are the screws. I don't want to bore you too much with uh, technical formulas, just to indicate what are the uh, potentials we have. We have indeed the chance to minimize the specific uh, CO2 emission by choosing the right uh, fuel and to reduce the consumption of fuel, no doubt. We can also uh, reduce the empty weight of uh, the aircraft, which is still a big, big challenge. We are currently looking at uh, A350 and the 787 Dreamliner, and the colleagues from Boeing and Airbus are working very hard to reduce the empty weight by introducing new uh, materials. We have the uh, aerodynamic screw to reduce the profile drag, and we have also the potential to change the configuration of the aircraft itself. And at the end of this uh, chain, we also have the engines, which can contribute by improving their efficiency. If we try to uh, use these screws, this picture gives you an implication of what will happen if we uh, try to change the things a little bit. We choose the A320 as an example, but you can also use uh, 777, for example, to see the same behavior. You see here what happens if you can reduce the operating weight empty compared to the maximum takeoff weight, and you improve this by, for example, 10%, you can reduce the uh, CO2 emission by only this effect, including snowball effects, by more than 10%. And the same is, in general, also true if you improve the uh, thermal and propulsion efficiency of new engines. You will have this uh, lane running to the right side, uh, to, the, to the bottom of this uh, picture. You can see also here you can have a significant reduction in CO2 emission by only this technology. And also other technologies like the uh, laminar flow the, uh, can contribute by a significant reduction of product uh, profile drag. What are the enabling technologies and when they are expected to be ready for service? This is what we are looking at uh, this morning. Here you see a rough overview about the realistic potentials of availability of new technologies for the next decade and for the wider future. Looking at the top left side, we are looking at the aerodynamic uh, profiles. Here there, uh, we have a realistic chance to introduce natural laminar flow technologies at wide fields of uh, the aircraft wings until uh, the 2020 timeframe. Going a step further in the center of this uh, slide, we look at the aerodynamic wing and uh, the introduction of racket wing uh, tips or spirit wing tips has an additional potential to reduce the uh, drag by approximately 10%. Looking more into the future, and uh, this is really a perspective for the past 2020 um, area, the introduction of quite new configurations like uh, blended wing uh, body aircraft or box wing aircraft uh, is something which is really a long-term perspective. But something which is coming up today as a really short-term and also mid-term uh, perspective from our point of view is the introduction of new kind of fuels which are very promising and make big step forward throughout the last two years which can uh, reduce CO2 emissions significantly. The introduction of new uh, materials and structures is, as I mentioned, still a challenging task. And the main major challenge is not the creation of new structures, but the right design, the appropriate design for these new materials. Not uh, designing 
a black metal aircraft, but designing an aircraft which is really appropriate to use all the advantages of carbon fiber composites, for example. On the engine side, uh, until 2020, the gear turbofan seems to be the most promising compromise between emission reduction on the one hand and noise uh, compatibility on the other hand. But I would like also to uh, draw your attention to something which is not obviously uh, when we only look at technology. You see here what will happen uh, for narrow body aircraft in the size of 100 to 200 uh, seats capacity, starting with the situation in uh, 2008. We expect that this kind of aircraft will increase over the next uh, 20 to 30 years by approximately uh, 3% uh, per year, only the narrow body aircraft. And you see by this uh, blue area that we can really decouple the fleet growth and the fuel consumption, uh, which is uh, uh, indeed reduced by approximately 10 to 20% uh, compared to the fleet growth. But what will happen if we can introduce a new type of aircraft only two years earlier, which a little bit less uh, efficiency. This is what is indicated by this red area. If, for example, we can introduce the new uh, 737 and the new uh, A320 successor uh, in 2014 instead of 2016, we can um, avoid approximately 20, uh, 22 million uh, tons of kerosene over uh, 25 years. And this is something which is a potential we should uh, keep in mind when we talk about the introduction of new technologies and new aircraft into the world fleet. There is a real potential to be earlier uh, in producing new kinds of aircraft. So the reduction of the product life cycle or the product innovation is a good potential to improve the economical efficiency of the world fleet. If we try to develop the global picture of uh, this vision, you see here in the uh, green area as well the decoupling of the world fleet growth, uh, growth of the narrow bodies uh, again starting in 2008 and the potential of the fuel burn reduction if we introduce the uh, 320 and the 737 successor a little bit earlier. This can really contribute to the entire reduction of uh, CO2 emissions when we are a little bit quicker than we are today. And this is, from my point of view, some, uh, a big chance we have to come closer to our targets we have uh, formulated in the ACARA goals, for example. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. One question about the speed going faster. Uh, <clears throat> you have shown us the possibilities and um, when you compare it what the industry is doing, are they fast enough or could they be faster? Um, from my personal point of view, they could be faster. Uh, we see that uh, the 737 as well as the 320 are very successful aircraft and both companies earn a lot of money, no doubt. But if we want to really to achieve this environmental friendly uh, aviation, uh, there is a big chance to be faster, to upgrade this kind of aircraft quicker than we do it today. But there must be a force from the customer size, uh, side to challenge the manufacturer to introduce new kind of aircraft. 